Hello, I'm Barbara Stripling, president of the American Library Association. Uh, for my entire career, I've worked as a school librarian and school library administrator, so my role here is to give you a picture of what it's like to be a student in this digital age. Um, I, my experience extends from um, Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I was working in a suburban library uh, to New York City. And I am actually speaking from my passion of students in New York City. I absolutely understand the impact of the digital divide. And in terms of a lot of our students in New York City, it's, it's a hardware digital divide. Uh, and absolutely the second level digital divide. Imagine for a moment that you're a student in, uh, in a school and you're in the same classroom with other students and you get an assignment that requires that you work online and that you gather information and come back and do this great assignment. And the person sitting next to you has a computer at home, has had a computer his whole life, absolutely can get on any time, has parents who have helped uh, gather information, no problem. But you have never had that kind of access. You don't have it at home. Nobody has explained to you how to navigate, how to understand whether this is good information or bad information. To you, a blog site looks the same as an authoritative source. And you turn in your assignments, and this person gets a good grade, and you don't. And it's not that this student is less motivated or less willing to invest in this. It's if this student doesn't have the skills or the access that is equitable and fair and just compared to other students in the same classroom. This is a silent di dilemma. And increasingly, teachers are recognizing that a, a huge proportion of teachers, 75%, um, of K-12 teachers are actually assigning projects and homework assignments that require use of the digital environment. And yet, only 54% of those teachers say that students have sufficient access to the tools that they need. Even more alarming, I think, is the widespread lack of digital literacy skills. And I, I would like to just give you an example of what we mean when we say digital literacy skills. Um, it's not only the ability to use the computer, uh, to maybe use Google. Uh, it is the ability to navigate very carefully and get to the right information. It is the ability to determine the authority of that information, the credibility, the accuracy, the ability to recognize point of view and bias and to actually seek multiple perspectives, which is very difficult in the online environment, to f pull in all of those perspectives. The ability to find evidence to support your conclusions and make sure that what conclusions you're drawing and the new understandings that you're gaining actually are based on credible and real and accurate information. That's what we mean by digital literacy skills. And that's what we mean when we say there is a second level digital divide. It's not just gathering websites. You can do that. You can get a million hits with no problem. It is that, that critical thinking 
thinking skill that goes beyond simply accessing information digitally to making sense of it and being able to use it in your own environment. What we find is that low income and ethnic minority children are much less likely to have this kind of access and to have adult guidance while online and they studies have found that they actually spend more time on low quality websites because they just haven't been taught the difference and it makes a huge difference in their ability to in achieve academically and personally. They become marginalized. They have to rush to finish assignments. They have to, what they end up doing sometimes is just grabbing information because they want to complete the assignment and yet they don't have the skills to, to find just the best information. So what we have found is where do those students go to get that access and training? And my experience is that the school library is the most powerful place for them because they have ready access throughout their academic career. And the school librarian is the person empowered who is responsible for training students, for educating students in the development of those important critical thinking digital literacy skills. That is the responsibility of the school librarian. Those are the skills that we are responsible for teaching every day to every student in our schools. And that those skills are actually the ones that are not only going to empower our students to learn and succeed academically in their situation there, but they're going to empower them to be lifelong learners. They're going to help them find the job applications and to search online. They're going to prepare them to be civically minded and participating citizens and lifelong learners. They need to learn that in school. No student should graduate from our schools in America without that ability to use information in a responsible way to live a full and civically engaged life. Um, we've shown that the power of a school library to impact academic achievement, there are a lot of research studies that show that there is a huge impact when there is a school library with a certified school librarian the academic achievement and literacy levels of students go up, controlling for all other variables. It's a huge effect. And, um, and so we need to pay attention to that because that's what we're about. We're about lifting up our students for achievement. Um, there are really three major points that we need to think about in terms of what school libraries need in order to provide this kind of support. Um, you may not know, but school libraries are an endangered species in a lot of communities of America. Budget cuts have reduced the number of school libraries that are open, the um, number of certified school librarians that are providing this kind of rich academic environment. So there are really three areas that um, we think we need uh, of strong support from school administrators, from the public, and from uh, communities. Uh, increased school library funding, staffing of all libraries with trained school librarians, and administrative support for collaboration between librarians and classroom teachers. So let me just tease those out a little bit. First of all, the funding support is 
is so important. Uh, libraries have faced extensive budget cuts in recent years. Um, President Obama's 2013 budget proposal cut $28.6 million that was earmarked for literacy programs under the Fund for Improvement of Education. Many school officials are facing uh, uh, these budget dilemmas by reducing or eliminating school libraries and certified school librarians. Uh, the school libraries are being converted in some places into almost a, a tech center with no instruction going on but just testing and, have, and using computers for testing. So that is really a violation of, of what our kids need by shutting these spaces of learning. We're shutting off our kids from opening up the doors to discovery. Uh, funding support makes a huge difference uh, for our schools. When I went to um, New York City, I discovered that there were schools of 4,000 students, and they may have 20 computers, many of which didn't work, um, to provide access in the school library for 4,000 students. And some of those only had one certified librarian. So students were just, they had no access, no instruction, no way to get at these skills. Um, uh, we need to think about, uh, on the federal side, the ESEA reauthorization. And this is hugely important because what we need to do is to ensure that school librarians are included as an essential piece of ESEA reauthorization language. Uh, when we get that into ESEA, it is going to provide the kind of federal recognition and support that is going to strengthen school libraries across the country. The second thing that students need is a state certified school librarian. We know that it increases test scores, but more important than that, we know that when you have a certified librarian, it allows students to develop personally and academically. Uh, students come back all the time to their school librarians and say, you made a huge difference in my life. And it is the opportunity of school librarians to broaden the horizons way beyond a single classroom. So that is an essential piece for our students in enabling them to set their sights on the future success that they want to have. And the third piece that we really need to pay attention to is um, the collaboration between classroom teachers and school librarians. What we find is that there's an increasing um, need for rigorous education. And certainly the Common Core and other initiatives have said we need rigorous academic content. But what we're also recognizing is that you can't learn that content without the critical thinking skills to make sense of it. And through a collaboration of classroom teachers and librarians, the school librarians provide the instruction on those critical thinking skills of how do you learn history and find the best information and make sense of it and use it in order to complete your content area assignments. I think you can tell that school librarians are very passionate. We have students at our heart. We know that if we can prepare every student to succeed personally and academically in the school environment, that we are handing off to the public library, to the academic library, and we're forming an ecosystem of library support and librarian support for lifelong learning. So thank you for your attention and understanding of the role of school librarians.